You're listening to Elevating Early Childhood. I'm Vanessa Levin, your host, and I help teachers of preschool and pre-K teach better, save time, and live more. Let me ask you a question. Do you have a light table center in your classroom? Or maybe you've got other questions about light tables, like what is it? Do I really need one? Where can I find one that won't break the bank? What do kids learn when they use the light table? What are the pros and cons of having one? And which activities and materials work best? You see, I get asked often about what I recommend having in each learning center in the preschool or pre-K classroom. Now, I remember the very first time I saw a light table in a classroom. I was mesmerized by the soft glow and the reflecting colors. There was just something about it that was so soothing to me. I desperately wanted one for my own classroom, but because of the price, I knew it was way out of my reach. And I was also worried about the space the light table would take up in my classroom because my classroom was tiny and I knew I could never fit a traditional like full-scale light table in my room. Now, just in case you're wondering what a light table is, it's a translucent flat surface like a tabletop with a light source underneath. So In this case, it's usually like a little wooden table that you see in a classroom, a little wooden table. And then there, instead of a tabletop, a regular one, there is um, a piece of clear, I don't know, acrylic or something on the top. And then a light shines up from underneath, right? This allows for things that are on top of the light table to be backlit, right? It backlights whatever is on the surface. So it's similar to how a stained glass window works, right? When the sun shines through a stained glass window, the light passing through changes colors and it looks amazing. Light tables were originally used in the field of drafting, right? But they quickly became popular in early childhood classrooms over the last 10 to 15 years. So just in case you're wondering where in the world you can find a light table, first of all, they come in many different shapes and sizes, and some companies make them specifically for use in the early childhood classroom. And here are a few that I've found that are popular. So Whitney Brothers, they make a really nice high-end Um, LED light table, but it's super pricey. So unless you plan on winning the lottery or you have a large budget, that one might not be an option. And then Constructed Playthings makes a flat tabletop one. So it's like a very thin panel that you can put on a table. So you don't need to have the physical table in your classroom. Um, It's one third of the cost of the Whitney Brothers table, but it's still more than $200, which puts it out of the price range of most teachers. Now, don't worry about searching for all the things that I'm going to be talking about in this episode. I created a blog post just for you with links to all the products in case you want to learn more or see pictures. And if you're watching this episode on YouTube, the link to that blog post is in the show notes notes below the video. And if you're listening, just go to my blog, pre-kpages.com and type light table toys into the search box. Since I knew a traditional light table was not in my budget, I kept thinking that there must be a way I could make one because I had already made a sensory table out of PVC and it was super easy. So I figured there must be a way that I could make a light table too. And then I realized I really didn't need a lot of things to make my own light table. All I needed was a plastic storage tub the kind that go underneath your bed, right? So an under bed storage container. Most importantly, that storage container needed to be clear, both on the lid and the body of the container. So for about $20, I was able to make my dream of having a light table a reality with just a few simple inexpensive materials. And so I'll walk you through it here 
really quickly. So step one, line the inside of a clear underbed storage container with tin foil. That lid, don't forget, needs to be clear too. Don't put tin foil on the lid, just the inside of the tub. And then step two, place battery operated puck lights inside. And then just in case you don't know what puck lights are, they're usually, and you can find them in any big box store. They're round usually, but I'm sure they come in other shapes. And I like to call them tap lights. Um, and usually you tap them to turn them on, right? They put them in closets sometimes to illuminate um, the inside of a closet. So that's what a puck light is. So you're gonna place battery operated puck lights inside of your tub. Now the number of puck lights you need is gonna depend on the size of the lights. So in the picture on the screen, I have a bunch of small little puck lights. Now, if they were larger, I would need fewer of them, right? The step three, you're gonna take your white tissue paper and tape it to the inside of the lid to your underbed storage container, right? So place it on the floor. The top is gonna to be facing down, right? The top of the lid will be facing down towards your floor or your carpet. You're gonna tape that white tissue paper to the inside of the lid and then flip it over and put it on top of the tub and activate your puck lights and ta-da, you have a light table. Now, if you're listening, you can find a link to the more detailed step-by-step -step directions for making your very own light table on my blog at pre-kpages.com. Just type DIY, that's do it yourself, light table into the search box. And if you're watching on YouTube, you can find that link right below in those show notes. So that brings me to the next question. What do little kids learn when they use the light table? So some people might think that the light table is just for science exploration, you know, exploring light and color, but there's a lot more to it than that. A light table can be used to enhance skills like literacy, math, writing, and all of it is done in a very fun and playful way because the kids are drawn naturally to the gentle glow of the light table, just like moths to a flame, right? And they stay there for long periods of time. So think about your really high interest centers in your classroom, right? Think about your dramatic play, your um, sensory table, and your block center. Those centers are typically super high interest, right? When you have those centers in your classroom open, your kids are all clamoring to go there, right? The light table is yet another super high interest, highly engaging center um, so that you can just add one more thing that you know your kids are gonna love to your classroom. And because young children are naturally drawn to this center, they tend to stay there for longer periods of time, which ends up stretching their tiny little attention spans, right? So the light table can be used for everything from open-ended play experiences to teaching academic concepts and more. But that brings me to the big one. What are the pros and the cons? So if you're on the fence about having a light table in your classroom or you're wondering, you know, I'm still not convinced that I need one. And nobody says you have to have one either, just FYI. But in case you're wondering, here are the pros. So the pros are that it's highly engaging. They love to play there. They remain on task for longer periods of time and it's a very popular center. I'm willing to bet that no child has one at home. That's one of the good things about it because often when we have things in the classroom, if they have that same thing at home, it doesn't hold that same interest or appeal. So very few kids have it at home. So it already adds a little bit of extra special something to it. Now the cons. And this is what kept me on the fence for a while before I made my own. It needs to be near a power source. Now, if you make your own, like I talked about, that method does not need a power source because your puck lights are battery operated, okay? And I have a little remote to turn them on and off. But if you have a traditional one, it does need a power source. So you have to be located near a power source they can take up a lot of space, right? We saw that Whitney Brothers one is ginormous. And even the smaller ones in a small classroom can still take up space. And you definitely don't want to use extension cords or anything because there's all kinds of 
issues with that as well, right? And the commercial ones are super pricey unless you make your own like I already talked about. So those are your pros and your cons of having a light table in your classroom. So this brings me to the most exciting part of the episode, and that is what activities can kids do on the light table? So even if you already have one, you're going to want to pay attention now because I'm going to share some of the things that I like to use on my own light table that I made. Okay, so first up are these DIY light table mats. Now, if you have ever gone to an office supply store or even a um, pharmacy, this is where I usually find mine from a pharmacy, they're index dividers and they're translucent and they're colorful and they have a little tabs on them because ideally I guess you're supposed to put them in a notebook or something to kind of divide the different sections in the notebook. Um, and they are very thin, they're flimsy, but they're colored. And guess what they are perfect for? They are perfect for putting on your light table. And so all I did with these index dividers was I used a permanent marker and I traced a shape onto the index dividers. And you can see, if you're watching along with us, I've taken a red one, a red index divider, and I've traced a heart, two hearts actually, onto the page, it's a single page. And I can cut these out or I can, there's a three, they're three hole punched. I can cut that part off. I can cut the little tab off because they're not needed, but it doesn't really make any difference to the kids, whether they're there or not. And then I also took a green one and I traced a shamrock on it. So I have some little um, stencils from my writing center that I used to, or my art center rather, um, that I used to just trace using a permanent marker onto these index dividers. And then what kids can do is, have you ever seen these um, floral marbles? They sell them at the dollar store or at your local craft store, places like Michael's and Joann's. And now I must say that this, that this surface that I'm using right now is not my light table because when I put the light table underneath the lights, so I already have lights shining down on my tabletop here. When I put the light table on this surface and I turn the lights on, the two lights, the one shining down and the one shining up, it's too much for the camera and it won't record. So I'm just showing you these on a regular old flat surface so you can't see the light reflecting up. But if you've seen one in action before, then you know um, that the light will shine up and this looks absolutely amazing. Um, and kids can fill the hearts, they can, do the outline. So this would be like fine motor. Of course, you could put numbers on here, letters. Um, you can do whatever you want. And these floral marbles, these flat marbles or gems, sometimes people call them gems. I've heard them called that before too. Um, you can find those at your local craft store. And they come in a lot of different colors. So I have some purple and some pink here, but they come in green. You could use those on the shamrocks. Um, anything you want. You could use shapes with these. Um, but of course, if your children are, uh, they, if they have special needs um, and they put things in their mouths, or if your children are young enough to still put things in their mouths, then you probably want to use something else. And I'll show you some more things you can use. So some other materials you can use on your light table that won't break the bank. So you're using your inexpensive light table. And you can also use these things. They're called table scatter. And they come in many, many different shapes. You can often find them at the dollar store. My favorite place is in the Target Bullseye Playground. Um, it's the dollar section at Target that's usually near one of the checkout areas. And they often have table scatter there. Um, I believe this table scatter came from a, what do you call that? A craft store, like a Michaels or a Hobby Lobby or a Joanne. I don't remember which one though, but these are all translucent and they're colored. And the, the ones I'm showing on the screen right now, if you're watching along are leaves, but I also, oh, there's pumpkins here too. Good. I, I wasn't sure if this set had pumpkins in them. But as you put these on the light table, the light will shine up and it just is so pretty 
and so calming when it the light table diffuses the light through these things. And some of these leaves even have a little bit of glitter on them um, to make them shimmer even more. And they come in, this particular set has orange, yellow, and red in it. And then this one I believe is like a amber almost. It looks brown to the naked eye, but when the light shines up, it looks amber. Oh, and there's also some clear ones, which is fine too. But this is called Table Scatter, and you can find it for a lot of different seasons and holidays at your local craft store. Okay, so next up we have translucent letters and numbers. And these, you can see these are a nice size. So these, these fit in the palm of my hand nicely, so they're not too small. And that's one thing um, that I know is important to a lot of our listeners is that these things aren't choking hazards. So anything that I'm showing you today, if you think would be choking hazard for your students or your child, then don't use it. Um, but these letters are nice and large, no choking hazards here. And these look amazing on the light table. So imagine you could take your um, permanent marker and take some transparency sheets. I've even used one piece of laminating film for my, my um, Scotch laminator. You know, I cut their, their sheets have two, they're two ply, you cut, cut one in half. And then I've traced with the permanent marker children's names on there and they can match their letters of their name to the little mats that you made with that. Or you can use transparencies if you have some, or have some available to you if you wanna purchase some. Um, but now you've got letter matching, you can make letter matching mats, you can make name mats, um, and children can be practicing letters. This particular set that I'm showing you also comes with numbers as well. So there's letters and numbers. So they have um, numbers zero through nine, obviously, and your kids can practice activities, uh, counting activities. Maybe they could put out, you know, like you would put out the number three and then they would have to count three of those leaves or whatever it is that you want to do. But I really like these translucent letters and numbers and, and that link is in the blog post in the show notes. Next up we have translucent linking cubes. When I saw these, I could not hit the buy button fast enough because think about it, you probably already have these types of snap cubes or linking cubes in your classroom and they are fantastic math manipulatives because your kids can pattern, they can sort, obviously they can build, but they're excellent fine motor practice because they have to put them together and then take them apart. You can see how tightly they go together because they make the little popping noise. And your kids can count, make patterns, do all and build, do all kinds of things with them. And when they sit, because these are translucent, when they sit on the light table, they definitely are amazing looking because it's like that stained glass effect we talked about before. Um, so these are called translucent linking cubes and they are perfect for using on the light table. Um, somebody in our Teaching Trailblazers mentorship program was talking about how she likes to use little 10 frames. So she takes one of those transparencies and she draws a 10 frame on it with a permanent marker. And then the kids can do 10 frame activities using their linking cubes. So, so, so fun. And just another level of engagement to add to your light table center. Next up are magnetiles. And these are a favorite by teachers and students alike. All young children love magnetiles. And you can see they are these translucent, they're plastic translucent pieces, right? And the children can, whoops. <laughs> The children, did notice how I said children, not me, can build with them. Um, I don't do it as well as the children do, but they can make structures 
and they can build things. They are so super cool. All kids love magnetiles. So you can see they, they hook together and they do all kinds of really fun things and they attract and repel just like um, regular magnets do. So there's lots of learning there, whether it is a building, whether it's colors, color blending with the different colors shining through, whether it is um, magnetic properties. These are a huge hit with all kids. And again, these are called magnetiles, if you don't know already. And you can find a link to those in that blog post I mentioned. Next up, we have these translucent pattern blocks. These came from Constructive Playthings. They're light table pattern blocks. And they are the same size as the regular pattern blocks that most early childhood classrooms use and have on hand. Um, so you can use them with my pattern block mats. If you want to print the pattern block mats out on transparencies, or we have members of our Teaching Trailblazers mentorship program who just print those um, pattern block mats on regular copy paper, and then they put that copy paper on the light table, and it still shines through and allows the kids to put the... Um, the pieces on there, these little um, pattern blocks, and to do the activities there as well. So I, I thought that was brilliant. No, no extra anything needed other than your translucent pattern blocks. So I was also thinking that if you could take those um, those page dividers that I showed you earlier and you cut them to, to the size of pattern blocks, now it sounds like a lot of work, but you could also do little pattern type activities with those as well. So again, those were light table pattern blocks from Constructive Playthings. So next up are these translucent bingo chips, if you will. They're just little translucent discs. Now again, if you have children who put things in their mouths or they're, they're too little to play with these, then you don't wanna choose these. But these are beautiful and they go really well with my bingo dot marker alphabet activities. So you kids can use those activities with bingo dot markers, which are highly engaging, but now you can also use those things on the light table and they have letters on them and kids can put the little colored discs in the circles that were designed for the round bingo dot markers, right? And now they can use these on those pages as well. And again, you can just print them on regular copy paper and then the light still shines through the paper and the kids can add the little um, translucent chips or you can print them on transparency paper. But these little chips, of course, I got them on Amazon, like just about 90% of everything in my life, right? I got those on Amazon, um, yeah. So these are super cute. I keep them in these little um, iris containers. These are like photo keeper containers. And that's where I keep my gems and my table scatter and um, anything small like this. So I have a whole, a whole case of these iris photo keeper containers. And that's where I store a lot of these little types of items. And another thing I don't wanna forget are these beautiful translucent cups. So these are actually shot glasses. Um, the kids don't know that. They have no idea what that is. Um, and I got these at the dollar store and they come in beautiful colors. And you can use them as is for kids to build on the light table. So they're super cheap because they came from the dollar store, right? They can build with them or you can even write letters on the bottom and have them do letter matching activities, all sorts of things you can do with these awesome cups. And don't forget if you're watching along on YouTube, the link to the post with all of these different materials is in the show notes or you can go to prekpages.com, that's my blog, pre-kpages.com and type light table toys into the search box. So just in case you're wondering where on earth I store my light table because I use that underbed storage box, remember? Um, I keep it tucked away uh, underneath my sensory table. And whenever the kids wanna play with it or whatever, they can just slide it out, right? And then they use it right there on the floor or you can lift it up and put it on a tabletop because it's just an empty plastic box. Basically, it doesn't weigh anything. And because the tub is 
it has a nice cover on it, right? It has a lid and all the stuff is contained inside the tissue paper, the tin foil and the puck lights. Those are all inside. So I just can clean off the top if I need to with a, a damp towel. Um, no big deal. So we just st store it away underneath whatever you have in your room. If you have got a closet, that's great. We just pull it out whenever we need it. People ask also how long the batteries last in the puck lights. And that really depends on the type of puck lights you get. I got really lucky and I found some LED puck lights on sale at a discount store um, that we have in my area called Dirt Cheap or we had in my area. And that store has all kinds of things. And I found those puck lights for a very small amount of money and they were LED. And the light, the batteries in those lasted for a really long time. We're talking probably three weeks of daily use before one of them gave out. And the table still works if one of those lights goes out, right? So it wasn't a huge thing, but if they, if you're using one with batteries, then that is a concern as well. You can put that on the con list is that you do have to buy batteries for your puck lights. So another question I get asked all the time is how often do you change out the materials on the light table? And the answer to that is really just whenever the children's interest starts to wane. As a general rule of thumb, I like to change things out every two weeks or so. But if their interest starts to decline sooner than that, then I can certainly change it up. Um, more quickly. Just depends on how engaged the children are with the materials that I put out. I also have some printable resources you may find helpful if you decide to have a light table center in your classroom or even if you already have one. So the first one is my light table center sign and you can find this in my center signs packet. And this is for really more for the adults than it is for the children. The picture is for the children to tell them that's the light table center. Um, but the words are for the adults that come in your room, whether those are administrators or specialists or whomever it may be, even parents. The second one is more for the children. And so this goes nearby the light table, whether that's on the wall or wherever you decide to put it. And it lists specifically um, what children can do there. I call these my I can center task cards and I have one for each center and you can find them in the I can center task cards bundle. Um, but this one says I can place objects gently on top of the table. That's important when you're dealing with the light table because it is a delicate thing. Now it's not super delicate, but it's, you know, we don't want to be stepping on it or slamming anything on top of it. Um, I can share the materials. That's pretty much true for every center in the classroom, right? And then I can clean up. And that's also true for every center in the classroom. But the most important one, in my opinion, is placing the objects gently on top of the table. So there you have it, all things light table center. I hope you got a few ideas you can take away and use in your classroom right away. Until next time, I'm Vanessa Levin, onward and upward.